Hi guys, this is Mr. Rego, and today we're going to talk about even and odd trigonometric functions. As we can see, we have the graphs of this is my cosine function and this is my sine function. All right, the difference is that one starts at the amplitude and the other one starts at the origin. Uh, what I'm going to graph this right now, we're going to use them as a tool to prove even and odd functions. All right, so let's go to decimals first. We're in decimals and I have my functions here. So first, let's talk about the cosine function. Cosine, it keeps repeating the same, the same curve to the left and to the right. Remember, we're proving even and odd. So we graph later on. Now, uh, when we're proving that a function is even, that means it's going to have symmetry among the y-axis. Remember, this is my y-axis. So an even function is going to have symmetry among the y-axis, meaning if I take a piece of the function, and I reflect it on the other side, it will land it like that. So in my case, this is an even function. Now, to make my point, uh, I'm gonna graph only a little piece. I'm restricting my domain between zero and pi. So that's my black graph. So let me turn this off. That means if I, if I reflect this into the other side, I will get the same curve on the other side. As you can see, See that the little piece. Therefore, my cosine is an even function. Now let's look at the y, uh, at the sine function. Now this is my sine function. The difference is that my sine starts at the origin. My cosine starts on the, at the amplitude. Okay, and my amplitude right now is probably one. Right, as you can see, I have negative pi over two to pi over two, and that's where my I want to restrict my function. So let's turn this function, and now I said. I want to restrict my, my sine function. The whole idea about restricting the restricting the uh, the domain is that this, my regular function, yes, is a function because it passes the vertical line test. But if I want to find out if the inverse is a function as well, I use the horizontal line test and right now it's not passing. That's the reason I restrict my domain. Okay? Uh, so in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. If I mirror if i reflect my line over the y-axis you notice i don't have there's no graph in here okay let's zoom in a little bit so we can see the shape of the curve my amplitude is one so let's say that i want to reflect this over the y-axis then i'll have some kind of curve that goes like this right that should be my graph so if my sine function was an even function then this would be the piece that i'll have on the left side which i don't have so now i need to find out if this is an odd function in order to be an odd function, it has to have symmetry among the origin. So that means I reflect over the y, and then I make a reflection over the x. In my case, if I reflect over the x, then this is going to land it. So right now, my cosine is even, my sine is odd. Now, let's do this mathematically. Okay, so let's go to our PowerPoint. Now, now that I'm here, I'm going to prove that my sine or cosine or tangent, all of them are even or odd okay for that i'm going to use the 45 45 triangle okay and then i'm going to evaluate a couple of functions to show you if they're even or odd so let's start with the cosine of 45. cosine of 45 i put I place my 45 45 triangle on my corner plane and 45 degrees is going up right this is my 45 degrees so my cosine of 45 is adjacent side and the adjacent is square root 2 or 2. So my answer is that. I'm done. All right, next one. I'm going to find out how much is cosine of negative 45. If you notice, the x is my angle, is my 45. Because I did negative 45, now instead of having f of x, I have f of negative x. But now, negative angle, that means I'm going to go down. My negative angles start at the x-axis but it goes down so this is negative 45 degrees okay and now if i'm doing cosine of negative 45 degrees i know that it's also my adjacent side and in this case my cosine is positive in q1 but it's also positive in q4 so this the answer is square root 2 over 2. now what do i use that for because in order for me to prove that it's even or odd here's the math even function, if I do f of negative x and it get equal to f of x, that means it's an even. 
but when I do a negative sigma factor, it's odd. Let me explain. We notice that f of negative 45 cosine of negative 45 is the same as cosine of 45 degrees, right? But now, cosine of 45 is f of x. And cosine of negative 45 is my f of negative x. Because remember, I'm changing the, the angle to a, to a negative. So this is an f of negative x. So right now I have that f of negative x is the same as f of x. Therefore, that's an even function. Let me explain that using the sign. Now let's take sine of 45. Sine of 45, my angle is positive, so is this 45 degrees. And now my sine is the opposite sine, which is square root of 2 over 2. Let's do sine of negative 45. Sine of negative 45, and now I'm going down, and that's my negative 45 degrees. Okay? And my sine is the opposite sine, which is, because it's going down, is negative square root of 2 over 2. Now, if you notice, the only difference between these two is that this one is negative and that one is positive. So I can work out with the sign of negative 45 saying that, look, this is the same as that. So I have negative sine of 45, negative sine of 45. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm saying f of negative x is the same as sine of negative 45, which is the same thing as negative sine of 45 okay so I'm saying sine of negative 45 is the same as a negative this negative and sine of 45 square root 2 2 because sine of negative 45 is the same as negative sine of 45 this is my f of negative x and this is minus and my sine of 45 is f of x so because this happened, then my sine function is an odd. And I remember, I show you graphically, all right? So my cosine is even, my sine is odd. Let's take a normal one. Now let's take a look at tangent. What's gonna happen with tangent? Tangent of 45, this is my 45 degrees. Tangent is opposite or adjacent or sine or cosine, which is gonna be square root two or two, right? Opposite over adjacent, which is square root 2 over 2. Because the top and the bottom are the same, then that is equal to 1. Tangent of negative 45, now I'm going down. That's my negative 45. It's opposite over adjacent. Opposite is negative square root 2 over 2, divided by my adjacent. My adjacent to the angle is this, which is square root 2 over 2. And same thing happened. Top and the bottom are the same, but now the one on the top is negative. So I keep that negative, and this divided by big is give me 1. So right now, my tangent of 45 is 1. My tangent of negative 45 is negative 1. As you can see, the only difference is the negative. Therefore, that's going to be an odd function. Okay? Because I can rewrite this as tangent of negative 45 is the same as negative tangent of 45, right? This negative is this negative, and tangent of 45 is 1. Because this happened, then what I'm saying is that f of negative x, my angle is negative 45, negative x, is equal to negative of tangent of 45, which is my f of x. Therefore, my tangent is odd, all right? Next one. Now that we have those, let's see how we use them. How do we use when it's, uh, a function is odd or even? Cosine, even, right? Remember, my cosine is even. That's negative 30 degrees. Okay, it's even. Therefore, because it's even, that's the same as cosine of 30, which is this angle. And cosine of 30 is my adjacent side, which is square root, root of 3 over 2. All right, cosine of negative 60 is an even function. It's the same as cosine of 60. Now, if this is 30, then this is 60, all right? 
and cosine is my adjacent side, therefore it is one half. Sine, sine is odd, therefore it's the same as negative sine of the same angle, sine of 30. This is my 30, sine, opposite. But remember, I have a negative in front, so I have this negative, and sine of 30, this is my angle, sine is the opposite, is one half. All right, uh, let's write sine of negative 60. Sine of negative 60, remember, this is an odd function, so it's the same as negative sine of 60. This is 60 degrees, right? This is my 60, therefore sine is the opposite, which is square root 3 over 2. But remember, I have a minus, so it's minus square root 3 over 2. So that's the benefit of doing odd or even functions, because you can turn a negative angle into a positive angle. And remember, you're always using the 30, 60, 90 and the 45, 45, 90 triangles. What about now? Let's do some challenging one. Here we go. Tangent of negative 60, cosecant, okay? Why am I saying that they're challenging? Because now we have to work with different, different size. Tangent is the same as sine over cosine or opposite over adjacent, right? Same thing. Negative 60, my tangent is an odd function. So this is the same as negative tangent of 60. So I can use, remember this is 30 degrees, this is 60, okay? So I have negative tangent of 60, opposite over adjacent, this is 60, opposite over adjacent which is one half okay once you divide this those two the two from the denominator and the two from the denominator they cancel out and you ended up with negative square root three over two i'm sorry negative square root three divided by one which is and that's my answer cosecant cosecant is the reciprocal of sine so this is the reciprocal of sine okay but now sine is opposite of our hypotenuse because this is the reciprocal again I'm gonna write it here sine of my angle is opposite over hypotenuse cosecant is the reciprocal meaning flip this hypotenuse over opposite okay my sine is an odd function therefore any reciprocal will be an odd function as well so cosecant is odd remember cosine was even. Reciprocal of cosine is secant. So secant is even as well. Okay, so these two are even. My sine is odd, therefore my cosecant, which is and this reciprocal, has to be odd as well. So cosecant of negative 30 is the same as negative cosecant of 30 degrees. And now we just did this, which is hypotenuse over opposite. So the same as negative hypotenuse over opposite hypotenuse is one and my opposite we're doing 30 degrees 30 degrees opposite is one half so I, now i have one divided by one half i make the one at the top my my fraction the top the one all the way times the two and that's going to give me negative two and the middle ones the middle values will be the denominator from the top and the numerator from the bottom those two multiply and they put it on the bottom again the numerator from the top the denominator from the bottom you multiply them and they the answer goes on the top the middle ones the denominator from the top and numerator from the bottom you multiply them and the answer goes on the bottom negative two divided by one is negative two or you can also divide this using keep change flip this is just a shortcut all right so again this is our more challenging ones but we use odd or even functions to make our life easier. Remember, I had a negative angle, now I turn it into a positive angle. Okay, guys, this is it for today. Uh, our next video is going to be proven identities. All right, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, and stay tuned for our next video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.